And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Act three, buddy! Act three! Act three! Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to meander our way into the third and final act of the show. And it is said third act, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our hand-picked, hand-crafted, and hand-jobbed movie of the week. And this week, we continue our celebration of the one they call Bunny with a look at the 1973 Sergio Leone Western, <laughs> My Name is Nobody. Fun fact, his, his full name is Sergio Beverly Leone. Yeah. yeah. That's his actual full name. And uh, uh, secondly, this is a bit of a continuation but this little bottle cap sort of thing that Maxwell found during Shap that says changing to flats on it, apparently this had uh, eyeshadow in it. Okay. And uh, the color of the eyeshadow is changing to flats. Like, oh, you are out on the town. You change into flats. That's what this is. It was eyeshadow. I okay. binged it. I binged it during the break, like I said I would. So in the opening, I put Sergio Leone in finger quotes because he didn't direct this, he didn't write this, he didn't produce this, but according to the credits, the story was his idea, and he apparently helped direct a little bit, mostly second unit stuff, but if you put Sergio Leone's name in even the tiniest bit, people are going to say it's a Sergio Leone film. Yeah, much like Quentin Tarantino's Hostel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, th the way that I saw it is Tim Burton's A Nightmare Before Christmas. He came up with the story, he didn't write the script, he didn't direct the film, but people still say this is Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, but... So a lot of people think that this is a Sergio Leone film, which it isn't. It's a Sergio Leone Presents, and he directed a few second unit stuff, like uh, I think he directed some of the Hey, Look at the Carnival. Yeah. Here's a, here's a Terrence Hill shooting at a midget. Like, I think he directed that, but he didn't direct the entire film, so... Uh, it's, so it's not really a Sergio Leone Western, but it feels like a parody of one? Yeah, it actually almost does, yeah. But for me, yeah. this whole movie is just all about Terrence Hill. <coughs> it, yes, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But before we get into discussing the film, I would like to take a moment... Uh, before all of these films, to discuss what we're doing here this month. For yes. those people out there who might be uninitiated to our whole deal. Huh. My birthday month is March, and so on March, I try to just play to, to discuss movies that I like and that mean a lot to me and that I just really... Uh, fucking dig and so yeah. if i'm going to do say a clue or a and god spoke the greatest non-denominational bible story ever told three genuine religious artifacts to the first 50 customers special discount for church groups if i'm going to watch uh what other film uh, midsommar i don't fucking know then i would do that on march march is like the important month for me and october is bunny's birth month and so uh for four or five or six weeks during this period in time we hand it over to bunny and he takes us to different places i absolutely love 
the summer where we just watched what some people call black exploitation films, but weren't black exploitation films. They were just important films that uh, black people made about the black experience that were yes. very good. And it to think how many times in my life I have sang across 110th Street and never watched the film that that came from. Yes. You know, so that was a lot of fun. And I will say, when you first said, this time around we're doing Westerns, I, I immediately said this. Uh, fine. Yeah. But uh, last week was a weird ass fucking trip with uh, El Topo, which is Spanish for the Topo. Yes. And this week we're doing uh, My Name is Nobody, which is like a Sergio Leone presents a Sergio Leone parody. Uh, and this is a lot of fun. This is yeah. this this is a great fucking movie. Good. I'm glad Tell, you liked it. Yeah, I, I, I was surprised at how uh, fun this movie was. And at first, you know, knowing knowing like Sergio Leone and Italian westerns and spaghetti westerns and stuff like that, when I first saw it, I didn't do any research beforehand. I just watched the film. And the first thing I said was Man, Sergio Leone can really make Spain look like uh, the Wild West. And then it's like, oh, shit, he did film this in New Mexico. OK, then that explains some of it. Oh, he filmed the outside stuff in New Mexico and the rest was in Spain. OK, well, that makes sense. But OK, yeah. that's why so much of this actually looks like, oh, OK, that makes sense. I'm assuming he's some place in Italy with mountains but <laughs> but uh yeah this was this is a fun ass fucking film i really liked this yeah like, Tell, like it's yeah. downsides or well it's a western <laughs> yeah yeah <coughs> but tell us why you chose this movie bunny <coughs> take all the time you want to talk because i don't have a lot of favorite westerns, but I did feel like it's a genre that that we just don't do very much with. Yeah. So it was time to roll out some some westerns that I feel kind of belong in our wheelhouse. Okay. Okay. Basically, yeah. uh, a different direction to go in. Um, I I love Jodorowsky, so that that explains that. This I this I just loved for I, I love the the idea of it, you know, that gets me past the macho Western bullshit that is the rest of this movie, you know. But the way I see it is basically. Terence Hill is Henry Fonda's guardian angel. The way that I saw it, and this is probably me projecting, is that uh, Terence Hill's character, Nobody, is like the fastest quick draw in the West. And he has to be because he's totally fucking gay. True. That he's just 100% a gay outlaw, so he has worked really hard to be the best gunslinger because he has to be, because he's sort of like a gadavant, a vagabond, going where the wind takes him, getting into adventures and causing trouble, and so he has to be be the best because everyone hates gay people in the West. That's probably not what's happening, but that's how I took it. <laughs> Just sometimes his eyes and the way that he looks and the way that he looks at people. And it's like, I don't know. I'm getting at least some bisexual energy from this character. 
I, I, I would not be surprised. He had an I don't give a fuck about him that comes from being a part of the LGBTQ spectrum. Yeah. Where it's like you're so comfortable in your body that it's like, I don't care what people think anymore. <laughs> you know, but it, that was probably that was probably just me. Uh, OK, there's a puppy. Uh, hold. OK. So this is a puppy. What is the puppy's name? That's we have a name adorable. That doesn't have a name. Nobody's naming it. The puppy doesn't get a name ever. It's nameless. Okay, because we'll just call it nameless. The or we nameless can name it puppy. Dan Flashes. Oh my god, I knew it. I did my tell Hi, Dan mom. Flashes. It's a lot bigger than I was led to believe. What do you want you for think Darcy? this is big? Emma led me to believe it was much smaller than it was. Yeah. Okay. What do you want for Nord? Okay, this dog is freaking adorable. Puppy. Here, take it. It made me bleed already. Oh, I'm bad, Dan Flashes. Oh no. <laughs> uh, so, Bonnie, why don't you, for the for people who might not have seen this film, why don't you hit us with the plot? It's fairly simple because it's a Western. Yeah. So, uh, Henry Fonda is a gunslinger, uh, but he's like a marshal, so he's not like a bad guy. And he's he's... Well, he's epic, is what he is. Like, he is legend in the in the in the West for all the bad guys he's gunned down and all of that, uh, and how nobody could beat him and and all of this. And he is wanting to retire. He is uh, trying to get a train that'll take him to a boat that'll take him to America. Uh, uh, Europe, uh, UK, England. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Terence Hill comes riding into town, and he's basically Henry Fonda's fanboy. You know, he yeah. knows all of the gunfights he's had, he's known how many guys he's been up against. He knows the names of the guys he's killed. Yeah, and, he's a fanboy. Huh? Yeah, he's well, a fanboy. He's a total fanboy. Yeah. And he is trying to get Henry Fonda to die for his legend, basically. Where yeah. he wants him to fight this group Called, what the fuck were they called again? I forget. The Wild Bunch. The Wild Bunch. Something really generic. Which they kept showing, like, them riding into town, like 150 of them, that Terrence Hill wanted Henry, Henry Fonda to fight. So that he would have this glorious death and be a legend forever. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, with Terrence Hill being... Amazing, because he's nobody, so there's a lot of things he could do, because nobody could do that. Yeah. So, like, Where he's just not meat? fast with guns, he's stupid fast with guns. Did you and that is, basically, that is basically the plot. Yeah. Uh, fun fact... In this film, the character of Nobody is obsessed with uh, Jack Beauregard and wants him to fight the Wild Bunch. And the Wild Bunch was an actual gang of outlaws that was founded in 1892. And in this movie, it's 1899. So the Wild Bunch has, had been around for seven years. The Wild Bunch had a bunch of different names that they went by including the Oklahoma Long Riders, and my favorite, the actual name that they sometimes went by, the Oklahoma Oh! Both names, by the way, the Oklahoma Long Riders and the Oklahoma Braves, would be great names for sports teams. Okay. Just saying. And speaking of sports teams, apparently... 
There's a minor league basketball league. I didn't know this. I know that there's like arena football, which is sort of like minor league football. And then there's minor league baseball. Uh, I was a big fan of the Arizona Coyotes, not the Coyotes, the Arizona, I don't remember. Arizona Coyotes is the, the Arizona NHL team. But uh, so, so there's, but I didn't know there was minor league basketball. Yeah. And originally, minor league basketball, they had a small amount of teams, but apparently, uh, times are huge for minor league basketball because they're now expanding the amount of teams to like this ridiculous amount. So there are all these new teams that are popping up. And I live in a small ass town in Oklahoma, and we live right near a reservation that is owned by the citizen Potawatomi Nation, and they're getting a minor league basketball team. They're called the Potawatomi Fire, and their home court will be the Fire Lake Arena which is literally about a 10-minute walk away from my house. Wow. So there's going to be a minor league uh, basketball team uh, right here near where I'm at. And when I heard this news, the first thing that ran through my head was a Jackie Daytona sort of thing where shit, I'll root for them. I'm not a sports guy, and this is as confusing to me as it is to you, but I'll buy a shirt. I'll go to a game or two. I can see myself becoming a fan of this minor league basketball team. I'm going to Jackie Daytona this, like Jackie Daytona and the girls volleyball team. Yeah. So I'm going to be rooting for the Potawatomi Fire, but I'm going to call them I the see, Oklahoma. I, I see where you're going here. Yeah, I'm going to call them the Oklahoma Brace. Maybe I can get that to take off. Probably not. But, okay, so I don't know anything about Westerns. <laughs> uh, so as far as I'm concerned, the greatest Western ever made was and still is Back to the Future 3. Yes. The best Western of all time. I recently saw that at the drive-in. Uh, but I think the reason, I think the fact that I don't know anything about Westerns is one of the reasons why we're doing this. But I absolutely loved this movie. My name is Nobody. Apparently that's taken from the Odyssey, uh, Ulysses, or some shit. I don't know. Uh but I think the reason why I love this is solely, absolutely, one hundred percent because of Terrence Hill. He's just, he's just fun to watch. Yeah. You know, and oh. he... Where did you put the fucking I don't know. I think I put it around there somewhere. No, I don't think it's here. But I don't know. That was. Forever ago. Yeah, forever ago. Then there's also the fact that, that it, it could be covered up by one of the million bags out here. But I, but, but then it, it gets to the point where, where uh, if Terrence Hill wasn't in, if you just remove this one actor, I don't yeah. know if I would have liked this film. That's just the power of, of just the way he's written and the way he acts and the way he carries himself and his face and just his expressions and, and just, oh, I loved him in this. Yeah. He's got this flighty, I don't give a fuck attitude that I love. I didn't know that there was such a thing as Manic Pixie Dream Gunfighter. You know, that I think that basically nails it. Yeah, I didn't even know that was a thing. But yeah, he's a manic pixie. 
the dream fighter. The character that he plays, uh, nobody. He reminded me of, and this is such an odd thing to say about a Western, but I'm an odd person. Nobody reminded me of a specific schoolhouse rock song. Okay, yes, I want to hear this. Specifically, Lucky Seven Samson from Multiplication Rock. Okay. It's the number seven song. And it's sung by a rabbit named Lucky Seven Samson. And he's like a vagabond. He's in the back of a truck and he jumps off the truck. And he's going through the song. He's going through adventures, running from the police and stealing an apple from a cart and that sort of thing. But there's there the song goes. Now, people call me lucky because that's my name singing and dancing. That's my game. But this is the part that gets me. I never did a whole day's work in my life. Still, everything seems to turn out right. Okay, yeah. Like a grasshopper on a summer's day, I just love to play and pass the time away because I was born neath a lucky star. They said I'd go far. And so it, it sort of like a riding the rails type of person, <coughs> you know? Yeah. Like uh, I don't have a care in the world getting into adventures and having fun. And that's basically this guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would add to that Bugs Bunny as well. Oh, yeah. There's, there's some serious Looney Tunage in this movie. Yeah. Yeah, it he, felt... He's just not... He doesn't just, like, beat you when, yeah. when, when you're up against him. He embarrasses you. He shames you. He... he yeah to you, you know? Yeah. He doesn't just... He, it's not just a gunfight. You yeah. know? It's, it's yeah, there a are, fun little... Huh? There are some times where, like, he's shooting people and he's killing people, but most of the time he's not killing you. He could kill you, but instead, he's going to make you feel like shit. While making it very clear that, yes, he can kill you whenever he's finished toying with you. The one part of the movie that shocked me is that uh, the part where he's going through the town and they're having the big town-wide carnival, whatever the fuck, and there's black people with their heads through a tarp and people are throwing food at them. Yeah. That was a thing! Yeah. That was an actual fucking thing that they used to do to fucking black people and minorities. And, like, I was impressed that this Western comedy was authentic enough about the time to show that. Yeah. That impressed me. That, like, oh, goddamn. Yeah, no, that was an actual thing. I've seen the pictures. It's really fucked up. Oftentimes, they would throw actual fucking hard-ass fucking apples oh. at, these, at, at these people, and, and it was really fucked up. And the fact that this film is sort of a flighty comedy but got this one fact historically correct, I was like, oh, goddamn, I'm a shapologist. That's a real fucking thing. Like, good for you to show that, and good for you to show... Uh, the hero of the I am wrong. I love you. I am wrong. Hey, your dog's adorable. My dog, the, oh, the, the dog, yeah, the yeah. puppy Dan. Yeah. Its name is Dan. Dan yeah. Flash. It's so weird because people just pop in all of a sudden. Yeah, people just pop into this podcast. That's like, been they're happening. Not just, no, like they're, they're not even there, and all of a sudden, like. Bah! <laughs> yeah, because I got the green screen going on. Yeah. <laughs> so they just show up. But I don't have an actual green screen behind me, so it's that thing of, like, you put on on Zoom. I do not have a green screen. And they go, okay, then we're just going to do the best we can. Yeah. And that's why the, the microphone keeps popping in and out. Yeah. yeah. 
But like at times, this movie is just a Western. You're watching a Western. This is a Western. This is a really good Western. And then at times, it's a parody of those type of Westerns. And I found that to be quite intriguing. Yeah. Like and the whole, part... Like that whole drinking scene, which Terrence Hill kept from being boring, where yeah. he would have to drink, drink a large amount of whiskey, then throw the glass and shoot it. Yeah. And then the glasses of whiskey just kept getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. In a, in a Western, that would have been an action-packed scene that might not have been that exciting, but, like, Terrence Hill made it where it's like, oh, this is fun to yeah, this watch. Is, yeah, this, his whole pantomimes, his looks, his, like, elbowing the person next to him and showing them a glass of whiskey, just, like, chewing it the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. Fun as hell. Yeah. And then the parody, the parody aspect that I found the most intriguing is that, like, this is definitely a Western comedy, and this is how you tell, because number one, 200 people die, but I don't, I think the only time I saw blood is when he threw a pie at a guy's face. Yeah. I think that was the only time in the movie, like, oh, hey, I just killed... 150 people and not a drop of blood, but I throw a pie at a guy's face and now here's the only blood in the film. Plus, you get the legendary, the amazing, the incomparable 100% musical legend Eno Morricone? Yeah, uh, something like that. Morricone, the legendary, the guy when you think of Western music, you think of this man. And he seemed to, to like purposefully go, uh, OK, yeah, I'll write the I'll write the score for this film. And I fucking dare you to like it. <laughs> I dare you to like this film. I'm going to get a chorus of people singing. It's going to be the worst singing ever. I'm going to have bizarre music playing at times. It's going to be like ear screeching music. Yes. I dare you to like this soundtrack. It's like the opposite of like the, you know, mm-hmm. it's like the, I dare you to whistle this shit. <laughs> and I dug that. This is fun. You know, it's a Western. <coughs> it's a comedy. It's a Looney Tunes cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really like this a lot. Yeah. And Terrence Hill is just, oh, he's fucking incredible in this. I fucking love him. I With love like him. With like a little so much. mystical edge. Like yeah. a smattering. <coughs> yeah. You know? And again, it seems like the per- if we are starting with El Topo as the peak. This is definitely the next step down. Yeah, this is right behind it. Yeah. It's not nearly as intense. The message isn't nearly as thick. The message that was there was, you know, kind of macho bullshit. Yeah. You know, dying in a hail of gunfire. But Terrence Hill just made it all work. And made it strange, and made it funny, and made it interesting to get through. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I love this film. This was really good. <laughs> I, I really dug this. And, and that's all I've got for this week. My name is Nobody. This is a really good movie. Nice. It, it, all of the people's... Uh, all of the people were dubbed by different people except for Henry Fonda, who dubbed himself. Yeah. So that's Henry Fonda's voice. That's not Terrence Hill's voice. Everyone else is dubbed by different people. Uh, Let me tell you something. Let me tell you who would have been great as Terrence Hill. Uh, uh, The star of Bounty Law. He would have been great in this. Oh, yeah. 
the star of Bounty Law. I don't remember his name, but I remember his stunt name, Cliff Booth. Jack Cahill? Was Cahill. Jack Cahill, yes, Jack Cahill. Jack oh. Cahill, and then his stunt man, Cliff Booth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack Cahill. Jake Cahill. Jake Cahill. Yeah. Is that who he played? Or was that him? I don't know. No, I think that's the character he played. God damn it, I gotta fucking bing it now. Fucking hold on. God damn it. Uh, once upon a time, dot, 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 in Hollywood. I'm gonna kill myself when I finally hear it. Rick Dalton! God damn it! <laughs> yes, Rick Dalton played Cliff Booth. No, Rick Dalton played Jay Cahill in Bounty Law. Yeah. And his stuntman was Cliff. Yeah, there you go. Fucking. Mm, okay. Yeah. But uh, uh, he would have been amazing in this, is what I'm saying. Because he had that spaghetti western face. Yeah. yeah. But yes, that's he did. all I've he done. Totally did. And yeah. he could have but... popped up in one of these movies. Yeah, no, he absolutely could have. So that's all I've got for this week. Bunny. Oh, so excited. Uh, what are we doing this next week? We are taking another step down. I am pretty sure we have not done this movie before, but we might have. Because uh, it is a more natural fit for our show. Okay. Westworld. Oh, shit. I fucking love that movie. I never saw the TV show. I never saw the fucking TV show. Because I was so, I was so excited. I, I, I love the movie so much that I'm like, when I heard that they were making a TV show and it was being made by HBO, by the fucking Game of Thrones people, I just thought, oh, they're going to get this movie and they're gonna make it lost yeah you know they're it's gonna be all expensive and flashy and all of this they're gonna world build all of this shit but like the original movie is just so dumb and cheap and fun and fucking yule brenner and and how many lines does he have in this movie like nine fucking oh yeah love yeah. that movie i am so fucking psyched Next week, we're doing Westworld. <laughs> yes. And not the sequel. Now, it is already up on the cough cough. But Sweet. I did not I, notice I've already... today that it's a very large copy. Like four Okay, gig. cool. Huh? Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Because I've got a copy, and it's, it's, like the, it's like 500 megabytes. Yeah. It, it's like the, the smallest one I could find, so... It'll be nice to see some detail on that. And they made a TV show. Yeah. Which was like the Planet of the Apes TV show to Westworld. But, <laughs> oh, original I am... Original TV, or are you talking about the HBO thing again? No, no, they, they made like a show in the 70s. Did they? Yeah. Uh, let's see. I, I, I gotta bing the shit out of this. Uh... Original TV series. I think it only lasted for a season and then it was canceled. Uh, television series Beyond Westworld, 1980 something. 1980. TV series based on the 1973 series Westworld. They only did, they only, it was on CBS. They only filmed five episodes. And two of them were on air. So they aired three episodes and then it was canceled. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it, was, it, it was basically like the Planet of the Apes, the TV show. So, hey, we made Westworld into a series. It's really cheap and there's no original people. And, oh, it's already been canceled. And next week after the movie, after the podcast, I'm going to be running a couple of movies for Woodmas. Yes! I'm going to run Plan like 9, and I woke up early the day I died. Because everybody needs to see that shit. I used to do lots of things. 
No, 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 no. Love that movie. Love that movie. And then for the third one, you should show like something really bad. Like, I don't oh, know, I'm not Casablanca. showing the third one. Oh, okay, okay. I was thinking you should show something really bad like Casablanca or some shit. <laughs> But, okay, next week is going to be exciting. We're doing Westworld for our big Woodmas episode. We're going to be showing uh, some movies afterwards. That's going to be awesome. I'm really psyched for that. My wife won't be here, so this might be the nude episode next week. Who knows? Oh, okay. Who knows? I might be just smoking smoking meth. I might attack the whack. The whack attack. <laughs> Who knows? But, uh, yeah, so I'm really excited for next week. Next week, uh... The Shap is going to be indirectly about the Phantom. Yes. So I'm really excited about that. Which Phantom? Oh, you'll have to tune in to see. And uh, yeah, we're doing Westworld, the original, which I'm really fucking stoked about. But uh, now that I'm looking back at this episode, man, the ups and the downs, the ins and the outs. uh, Kevin Costner is a douchebag. Uh, Schoolhouse Rock. Travis Bickle. The live action Rocky and Bullwinkle. Cop Shop. Everyone should watch that movie. It's really good. Trump is a big fan of cats. I got to say, I think this has been a pretty darn good episode of the show. This has been a damn, damn good episode. Okay, good. I was going to say the same thing, but I feel like you're the person who makes that distinction, not me. And I didn't want to step on any toes, but yes. I concur, I concur with that assessment, good sir. (laughs) So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve. And on behalf of uh, Emerald, Natasha, Eleanor, Mal, Maxwell, and everybody else, I just got to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Fucking. Yeah. I'm not taking care of it. I could. Well. I have to, because y'all will be gone. So, like, we. Oh, oh, we are taking care of the puppy. We. By we, you mean. Me, but uh, me. whatever. Okay. Yeah, shit. And you, mallets. Do 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 do